Hey, how you doing? This is Mikey Worthington Comedy Podcast. Uh, you're listening to episode 20, and this is also Isolation episode 6. i uh, got a return guest to the show. we got Ross Yeoman back. This one runs a little bit longer, so I split it into two parts. The usual Ross and Mikey chat that everyone has probably gr- grown to enjoy at this point. Um, and then we go into the second part of the um, episode where we get into some more cool stuff. So, hope you enjoy. Remember, we've got um, a few things that you can send through. we got online reviews. So any funny online reviews that you see that you uh, think that should be shared on the show, send them through to MarkyWorthingtonComedy at gmail.com. We also have advice questions. I'm going to be starting a new section on the show where we um, read people's questions and give advice. And uh, finally, the um, hypothetical situations or random questions that you think um, the guest should answer. Send those all through to MarkyWorthingtonComedy at gmail.com com all one word and uh thanks for listening stick around and enjoy the rest of the episode this is another ross yeoman episode got him back for the third time now how you doing ross yeah good man uh so this is another uh isolation apocalypse episode that's right we're up to episode six of the um isolation episodes yeah good times hey i, I was thinking um just before you called. Yep. This, this is the third time I've been on, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Does that make me the most frequent person? Yeah, that's right. Like, if you had one of those fucking podcast stamp cards, you'd be nearly up to your free one. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I, was thinking, I was thinking to myself, like, if I if I'm Marky's most frequent guest, yep. that, even, that, that means one of two things, in my opinion. There's either something really interesting about me well, more likely, there's something really boring about you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That I'm the guy you go to, like, oh, I need a chat. I'll go to Ross. <laughs> Dude, it's, no, it's more a matter of, like, for some fucking reason, in the comedy uh, world, you're the most accessible <laughs> Yeah, because I've got nothing to do. <laughs> no, dude, it's just like you actually have a fucking phone that I can call you on, and um, most of the time you've got some shit to fucking talk about anyway. Yeah, I don't mind just talking shit and um, regretting it later. It's well, one of my fortes. <laughs> hey, at least um, at least you managed to find a way to like capture the shit talking and put it out for people to fucking listen to. Like, unless you listen to your own episode, I feel like there's going to be... Um, I mean, I wonder who's going to be the first listener. Because normally, normally I, I, you're the first that I hear feedback from. But then... Um, I don't know who the fuck's going to do that f- for you. I mean, hey, look, you're not only the most fucking frequently visited guest, but you're also the most fucking, um, at the moment, you've got like a couple of comments all up. So that's like mo- more than anybody else. Are they good comments or is it like, who is this fuck with? <laughs> yeah, well, no, the, 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 the one that we covered in the last episode was uh, was one of the better ones. It's just like, oh, I don't know about the the language on this Ross fellow, and uh, and I just described the yeah, I just said fuck with, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. But yeah, no, it's um, it's good to good to get you back, man. It's only um, it doesn't seem like that long since the last time, but I realised it's like that was towards the start of isolation. So like, I th- I think that. If we first predicted how long it would be before we had another episode and we said, like, a couple of months and then we were like, oh, yeah, that would also be still in, like, lockdown. We'd be like, holy shit, is it going to last that long? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I just it's, have... Um... Yeah, I've got no fucking idea. Like, and, and also, we might be looking back. <laughs> this could be us in three months' time going like, well, fuck, we thought that was long. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, a, it's like in December, we're like, you remember back in like June when shit was cool? Like, <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm starting to fucking forget what shit used to be like. Oh, dude, I am, I, like, so everyone's working from home. Yeah. Um, and yesterday, uh, our, like, remote login network went down. Yeah. And and uh, I texted my boss and I was like, mate, I can't, I can't get online. And he sent me a text and said, oh, okay, keep trying. If you can't get online, you've got to head into the office. Yeah. And and my first thought, like, I couldn't go into the office because I've, I've still got the flu and stuff and put, I'd be coughing and people would be looking at me like I was, you know, fucking 
you know, the devil. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like the only time but, that someone's not keen to take a sick day. Yeah. Like, if you wake up with a bit of a cough or something, you're like, fuck yeah, I can use some of that fucking sick leave. <laughs> but now motherfuckers are just, like, on their deathbed, like, no, I feel fine, actually. There's nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, but, it's like, like all of a sudden fucking strepsils and butter menthols are like at all time low sales. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, my, my, you're like my, I don't even eat butter menthols anymore because they taste good. Like, I don't even want to risk it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, Mr. My, my boss says this message is like, you know. If you can't get online, you, you've got to go into the office. And my first thought was, no shit, like, is that still a thing? Like, <laughs> is I, it still I, there? So, yeah, like, it, it, it's so funny how quickly you adapt. Like, yeah. working from home for two months, and then he's like, oh, you might have to go into the office. And I was, I was just filled with dread. Mm. Was like, I don't want to go into that building. Yeah. I don't want to go into a cubicle again. Like, yeah, dude. fuck that. Like, can you believe that once upon a time we used to fucking shit in stalls next to each other. <laughs> like, who the fuck does that? <laughs> is that going to be the future? <laughs> is that like, is there going to be... I, I look forward to the day that we look back at stuff like that and say, geez, shit was just fucking crazy when I was younger. Like... <laughs> I just like if if you like ever go to a public bathroom and someone's making literal noises with their fucking mouth while they shit, that person is fucking broken. Like the sh- <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck? Like if you have to make noises to shit, you need to fix something. Don't just accept that as fucking normal and go about your day. Yeah, I I mean I, I, I've worked in an office for so long. And I feel like there's toilet etiquette there is. in an yeah. office. Yeah, yeah. You know, like if you if you're gonna make some noise, you know, you're gonna make some noise. But one of the things I learned quite early was, um, like, you wear your your security tag on your belt, yeah, right? and it's got your name and your fucking photo on it. Yep. So when you sit down, you put your pants around your ankles. I learned very quickly to put that pass into my pocket. Yeah. Because otherwise, the guy in the next door can just see, oh, that's Roscoe having a shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, dude, like, it'd be at least, you, at least you're fucking, like, in the stall shitting. Imagine if you're just one of those, like, you just go into the fucking stall and you piss standing up, but you put your, sh- your fucking pants all the way down like a fucking, like, child. Oh, so that, like your yeah, shoes that, are facing forward, yeah. Just like you just see some drunk fuck at the urinal that's like got his pants around his fucking ankle, and he's like dipping his face in the trough trying to pull him up. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, fucking hell. I, if, if I saw that in an office, I'd, I'd be blown away. Yeah, there's... like not not the drinking on the job, just the pants down. Like if there's a drunk fuck in the toilet at your office, you're just like, mate, at least pull oh, your yeah. pants up and be a normal drunk fuck like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, we're all hammered, okay, yeah. mate. Like, yeah. just, just deal with it, all right? Have a couple of fucking coffees from the golden coffee machine, and um, get your shit back together. And there was, there's, there's this, um, uh, there, there's this photo I put on Facebook. Um, there's, there's two photos that I've taken inside buildings yep. of, of like signs for like uh, etiquette inside toilets and yeah. I've just thought I thought to myself like what the fuck and at some point I, I reckon I'm going to use one of these photos in my stand up but I remember going to Melbourne and um, there's two urinals and in between it there was a tap I, I don't know what the fuck that tap was for there wasn't even a drain under it right Yeah. Um, but underneath the tap there was this like you know, yellow and black warning sign saying, this is not drinking water. And I was like, who the fuck is going, like, literally lying on their back, two urinals either side, and going, might just have a drink of water. <laughs> like, are you fucking for real? Like, who is that sign for? It's like the... um. 
You know, like in the old Western fucking piss take movies where there's like some like dude that he's so drunk they just put him under a tap and turn the turn it on to try and wake him up. Mm. <laughs> just mm. Laying like he's fucking changing the oil in his car. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I mean, the, the, the other photo I took, it was, it was, I mean, it, just, I mean, the fact that this was in a bathroom, it, it, it was it, it was a photo uh, like a, a it was a diagram like you know you get in a plane yeah, and, like yeah. you you got the you got the thing of like the brace position and like yep. do this and like hold your knees or it was made in that fashion yeah but it was like the the different captions like a comic book sort of panel yeah um, were telling you how to and how not to take a shit. <laughs> so it was like sitting on the toilet, green tick, and then it was like it had a you know the next one with an, a red X, and it was um, like uh, crouching on the toilet, yeah, yeah, like st- standing on the seat with your knees, <laughs> and the, and then the next one was like a guy pissing into the toilet, green tick. Next one was a guy pissing on the floor, red. Cross. <laughs> and then the last one and i just i can't fathom how this is possible but <laughs> it was a guy taking a dump next to the toilet <laughs> and not in, and not in it and it had a red cross yeah and, and i took a photo of it because i was like if there has become a necessity to put that sign in a building, they have to seriously reevaluate their recruitment process. <laughs> like, I, I don't know who they're hiring that walks into a toilet, sees a toilet, and goes, "Nah, tiles are better." <laughs> like, what? I, 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 I can't wrap my head around it. Like, dude, he, that's the fucking weirdest. So, like, when you think about it, right? All right, for starters, worst comic ever. Like if you, if you just imagine that, just like instead of Spider Man, you open up a comic book and there's that. <laughs> <laughs> um, second of all, like how the the worst part about that is you can't really police it. Like you can't just be like, all right, mate, part of the interview process, we just need you to take a shit. We're gonna make sure you <laughs> <laughs> you don't fucking do it on on the ground. Um, you know. And sometimes when you shit, you piss a little, so we're going to make sure you fucking don't do that all over the floor as well. And aside from that, mate, should be good to go. Like, they're not yeah. they're not just, like, that's not going to be part of the fucking security vetting, like, shit. They're, they're not going to they're not gonna be like, oh, well, wait, like, you took a shit on the floor once, so we can only grant your, like, a, a, like a, we can't give you any high security clearance because we feel like this might come back to get you. Like, like oh, yeah, we can't trust you of information because we have photos of you shitting on a floor. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've got leverage at this point. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. it's, like Je- it's like the worst, lamest version of Jeffrey Epstein. Like, yeah. we, we've got the leverage. <laughs> yeah. The the difference I mean, is there. Um, if you shit on the floor, you should kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh fucking hell, man! Yeah, I, it, yeah. It, it boggles my mind. Like, yeah, dude. That's 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 fucking hilarious. Wait, I wonder. Um, because of the Epstein reference, I feel like we're officially demonetized on fucking YouTube. So you might as well just go for it now. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't, didn't 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 you say you um from our last episode on I'm not on YouTube? That's right. So yeah, reference to the last episode, dude. We um <laughs> I searched long and fucking hard to try and find um the ref the um video of you at Short Fast Funny, and yeah. um I went as far as going onto their page and looking f- through all their uploaded videos, and it wasn't there. <laughs> um. <laughs> And then I thought that maybe it just wasn't listed. So I went to the fucking email that they, or the message that they sent out with the links to everybody's fucking episodes. Cause like they sent them all in one big group, as we said before. Um, yeah, I think I've got that somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I went through and I'm just like, oh, well, I'll fucking <laughs> go through here, click on Ross's. No. Nope. So. <laughs> so that's just been totally taken just fucking down taken YouTube. down completely, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh man 
So yeah, there you go. You're a fucking hit on YouTube. Yeah, I'm absolutely. I'm, mate, I'm basically a social influencer. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just need to find a platform that'll keep you for long enough to influence <laughs> anyone. <laughs> Yeah, like fucking 4chan or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be influenced by uh, Ross, you need to subscribe to his Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> like, here's Ross. Ro- like, all these fucking, like, um, all these, like, um, Patreon accounts with chicks just getting fucking naked or whatever, and you're just sitting there talking political shit into the camera. <laughs> 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 Fuck yeah! Oh, uh, dude, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm glad that that's not on YouTube. Yeah, because like a, like we talked about last time, I I don't remember signing up for that to be on YouTube. Um, yeah, what, was it you and, that reported yeah. it? Like you just fucking fucked yourself over so that you could get out of it? No, <laughs> no. Nah, nah, I re- I reckon it was the organisers that went. Hang on a minute. Like I, I reckon they probably put it up for a day. Yep. So, so that I could see it, yeah. And then they probably took it down the next day. Yeah, dude, they, they did the they did the equivalent of fake throwing the stick when you're the dog. Mm. <laughs> like, they yeah, sh- yeah, yeah. <laughs> they showed you, so you thought that, like, oh yeah, cool, cool. And then by the time you've gotten to where you thought it was, you realise that they didn't even throw it at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm looking for the tennis ball, and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we both may have just had that as a figment of our imagination. Like we thought that it was on there the whole time, and it just never fucking existed. Like, cause I was at your set, so I seen it live. So sometimes you can replace that memory with the actual live, <laughs> the live set. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's the. I, I reckon the funny, the funniest thing about. I'm sorry to everyone if I'm repeating myself, but the funniest thing about um, my set was I said all that horrible shit um, and then went by the... Well, yeah, it it was the truth. But but by the time I'd walked backstage, the guy got up and said, um, yeah, Ross Yeoman, he's available for children's buddies. Um, and that got a bigger laugh than any of the laughs I got because <laughs> yeah. b- b- it was just like, uh, you know, I'd clearly crossed the line and no one felt comfortable. <laughs> Dude, I'm pretty sure that the CIT crew that fucking recorded that used the laugh that he got for your bits. <laughs> <laughs> just deadpan silence throughout my whole set and then they just edited in some of that fuck it i'm pretty sure they used that laugh for some of mine too <laughs> <laughs> oh man so is, is your is yours still up there yeah mine's still up there um the thing is it's like obviously shared on um on their account, so I can't actually. Uh, all I can do is reshare their link. I can't like I can't uh, like if some if they decide to pull it down, it doesn't exist anymore. So um yeah, which like I'm sure after all this shit we that I'm giving them uh like some fuck will like report it or some bullshit just to fuck with me. Yeah, dude, that's how much I think people give a fuck. People actually don't even care. Like, I, I, I'm thinking that someone out there is going to be like, you know, like a 90s computer hacker and just fucking go in, like, report my shit and get it taken down. But chances are it won't even get a fucking watch um, from from the average Joe. Anyone that gave a fuck would have seen it by now, so whatever. Um, but the bottom line is um, basically... <sighs> If if you're into reverse psychology, um, I've shared the link on my Facebook page. <laughs> no, <laughs> nah, all I'm saying is like I prefer, like you're saying before, to have control over my own content that's out there. And all the while, yeah. it's posted by another um, another site. I don't have as much control over like how much I share that or where it's available. I can only really share a link to it. So yeah, that's one thing. But then again, you know. Don't you fucking love that, like, spiteful shit? Have you ever had that? Like, where someone will just, like, report something or leave a bad review on a website or some shit just because they had, like, they took, like, a bad experience and took it personally? Well, no, because I, I don't, like, other than 
I mean, I'm sure our, probably our last episode, because I think, did you put that on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'll get taken down. <laughs> um, this will get taken down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, Enjoy I, it I while don't... it lasts, people. Like, you, you've got 24 <laughs> fucking hours. Make sure you smack that share button. See if you can fucking... <laughs> if this isn't taken down in 12 instead of 24 hours, no one shared the shit enough. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. No. I no. I've never had that experience because I I don't really put like I've never put any of my stuff on YouTube. I've mm. never uh, like I don't have a social media page. You know, it's and, and and yeah, it's way too early for me to be doing that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if it, it, if if the Melbourne Comedy Festival had gone ahead, um, you know, and I I've been opening for you know Kind Bill and stuff like that. That's when I would have considered doing something yeah, in terms of yeah. social social media but um like a lot of like a lot of the guys in the canvas scene like you know their facebook profile is them with a mic mm. um and you know i'm i'm just not ready to to sort of say that like i yeah. i don't I, I i don't think i'm a comedian yeah, like, i i think right. i'm i think i'm a guy that you know has a couple of beers and then goes up and tells some you know off-color jokes um but i'm not a comedian you know uh, I, I wouldn't give myself that moniker um so yeah but it, it, if the melbourne comedy F- festival had gone really well um that's when i probably would have would have considered it or after the raw finals if that had happened yeah yeah it would have um, been around the same time anyway yeah 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 it's pretty fucking crazy man like to be honest with you, like I call myself a comedian because it's it's what I want to be known as. It's more of like a to be honest, it's more of like a um like a um like an aspirational target. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's like it's like um yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like I I if I'm going to do it, I may as well. Like everything I do, I always go in hard and that's how I usually prefer to do stuff because it means that I gave it the best possible fucking chance of like succeeding. So like if I if I do comedy like I do, like I'm obviously going to have a fucking page and all that shit and I'm going to share videos and do podcasts and stuff like that because I want to like go in with both feet on everything that I do. Um Yeah. And that's because I put a lot of time and effort into everything that I do. Sometimes I end up running out of time or not being able to do certain things because I'm like, I kind of go in too hard. So if I've got multiple projects on at the same time, I tend to run out of um, steam for like one of them or two of them. But usually by that point, it, I know which one I want to get rid of, like which thing I, I want to stop doing because I've like given it the best possible chance to go well like anything that i like have a crack at i go in super hard and then i'm like if it doesn't work then i know all right like i fucking gave that a shot so i i don't need to like always wonder what if sort of thing yeah exactly yeah you gave it your all and then you can you can sleep easy at night knowing that you knowing didn't do it half it crack. yeah yeah like it's it's like I seen I seen a meme earlier today, and it was just like if Internet Explorer still has the balls to ask if it wants to be the default browser, you can ask anyone out you want. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that's classic. Yeah, dude. Like it's that's, but that's how it how it goes, man. Like I'm usually um. And sometimes you, like, stuff works out and sometimes it just, like, you gave it a shot and it didn't fucking work. And sometimes it's just not your time. Like, for example, I know that um, comedy is, like, a a massive fucking... It's, like, a really long process to get to where you considered successful. And um, Yeah, well, like, yeah, you... you you do your first open mic and you're like, all right, I'm ready for my Netflix special. And it's like, no, that's not how this shit works. Yeah, dude. It's like, even, so I look at it as like small progression. So like, I won't, I'll have like long-term goals, you know, like things that like, oh man, that would be so fucking cool if I could do that. And I'll always keep that in the back of my mind. In fact, I sometimes even write them down, like in my notebooks for comedy and stuff, I'll put down like notes, like at the back of the book or some shit like where I um like long-term goals and shit like that or just little like 
things that would be cool one day to like work towards but um for right now i usually just write down like 12 month goals and shit like to do to to like get to that spot so like starting a podcast was one of those things you know getting some um like online presence like youtube and all that sort of stuff is is just like small steps that i like to like little goals that i like to tick off and shit like that it sounds like a pretty stoop it sounds kind of like cocky like kind of like you know a business but it's it shouldn't be looked at that way it's like entertainment it shouldn't be like you know shouldn't be like a job but it's i actually enjoy doing it like i'll work 16 hours a day for myself but it's fucking sometimes difficult to do eight for someone else yeah definitely yeah, it's uh, like uh, my reluctance to to put anything out there, like other than yeah, you know, things like you know your podcast, um, and my retracted uh, YouTube video. Um, <laughs> I, I I think that stems from like a I don't know maybe uh, maybe, I, maybe I'm being a bit of a coward. Mm. It's just that it, 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 there's such a cancel culture yeah and i know that's an overused phrase yeah yeah. but i i don't want to put a youtube clip of me doing a doing a joke about like everything i do is a you know dark sort of subject matter yeah and i i kind of don't want to do that until i'm ready to to fully launch yeah yeah sort of sort of sort of thing like you know um it's like uh, the short little dude that uh, was going to host the Oscars, you know, and then the tweets came back and, and you know, that kind of shit. It's just like I, I'd rather I'd rather kind of achieve something and then do the promotional side. Yeah, no, I, I, I get that. I, I get it. Like, it, you can have different methods of achieving, a, like, a goal. But, yeah, I'm... I'm like a list person. I like to write shit out and fucking tick off like wins and stuff like that because I'm like fairly analytical. Um, yeah. But I, yeah. I know that like a lot of comedians that I listen to their podcasts and shit like that have a sim- more similar approach to yourself where they're like, they, they prefer to just put in the time on the stage and um, get better at what they're doing as opposed to like become, building a an audience and a presence online and shit but I'm, I'm definitely not shy of getting on stage like i love to go up and try new shit and just like do stuff off the dome and sometimes i fucking eat my dick but like i just <laughs> i just fucking um keep keep giving it a crack like I, i've thought of a few jokes um, during the lockdown and I'm fucking keen like to just I've got like a whole new set that I want to try out and I, I I nearly probably like won't have any old jokes in my first set when we finally get to go back like yeah I, I, I yeah. wanted to I wanted to ask you about that because things are starting to open back up and um I I might be running one of the rooms in canberra yeah um and i i don't think i'll MC it like i'll probably MC it a couple of times um but you know like going from just doing your you know your five six minutes to yeah. MCing, that's a big jump yeah um that you know that you've obviously made very successfully but oh, thank you. you know i i wonder if i'm you know, ready to do it. I'll, 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 t- I'll try it, you know, whatever. Um, but, um, yeah, I wanted to ask you, in terms of everything opening back up, are you, like, hungry or are you kind of nervous because it's been so long since you've been up? Um, no, I'm fucking hungry, man. Like, I, I miss it so much, dude. Like... I um I, I'm I'm a little bit apprehensive about you know where people will be at with their heads and all that sort of stuff like whether because you you've ever have you've ever well have you ever been on stage when um the person before you is bombed or whatever um and all of a sudden the atmosphere is completely different or what? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I suppose I'd have um, to ask someone that went up after you. <laughs> <laughs> you prick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just fucking with you. But um, <laughs> like, if you ask anyone that's followed me, they could probably answer that question. <laughs> 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 oh, man. No, but I... um. Oh, dude, I've been that guy. I've been the guy that's just fucked up the um the stage for the next person. Like, sometimes I've done well and it's been difficult for the next person. And then other times, like, I've just fucking, like, gone real shit and the next person has just, like, either done really well because it's, like, direct comparison or they would have had a good fucking set anyway, you know? Like, e- either way, it's hard to, like, you can't really blame the person before you or like whatever the the MC or whatever um but at the end of the day like look man sometimes the MC it definitely helps sometimes the fucking um person before you it definitely helps but at the end of the yeah. day dude if you're fucking confident in what you do and you've got gold like you've just got fucking like you come up spit and fire who gives a shit you're going to fucking win it over um and even if you're the guy, like, sometimes you could have to follow yourself. I've had a really good intro and then fucking, like, ate a bag of dicks after that. Like, <laughs> I've gone in too hard and fucking, like, used up all my good shit. And then I'm just fucking left with sweet fuck all. And um, that doesn't even help either. Or sometimes I've just gone real shit and luckily just won them back midway through, you know. Or I get stubborn. I'll be like, uh, I'll think to myself, like, well, I'm not fucking leaving until I get a good laugh out of these motherfuckers, so. Yeah, yeah. I the, I the, like I so, so you've been you've been writing new stuff. Yeah, I like not as much as I would have been if I was on the stage because if you write something down and you try it, now you're rewriting it or you're like you know it's trash and you throw it out or you just chuck it on the back yeah. burner never to be seen again. Um mm. but I'm not writing as much as I would be if I was trying it because I haven't tried any of the shit that I've written down yet. Um, yeah, it it kind of feels. I don't know. I, I I think a lot of comedians probably, and like I say, I don't call myself comedian yet, but um, I think I think a lot of comedians probably feel like um, they're sort of singing in the shower. And yeah, they can't yeah. tell. How, they they don't know how shit their voice is yet <laughs> until until they go out and actually, you know, find out. And we and we've been doing it for months, and it's like. You know, when am I going to test this new joke and you know see if it see if it flies, see if it lands, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, one one thing, one one other thing about like coming coming back to this, like coming back to the mic. Um, what do you reckon about like one of the things I'm worried about is that there is just going to be this like tsunami of covid jokes yeah yeah that's a hundred percent of what like i want to avoid um i obviously running a room i'm gonna have um i'm gonna have to mc or put people up or whatever um and that's going to be a thing where as an mc you just let people do what they want to do but if um i just have a, a fucking whole open mic full of covid jokes I'm going to be like, oh, man, this is, like, going to get old. But at the same time, man, a lot of comedians write about their current life and what they're dealing with. Now, everyone's <coughs> in the same situations. Everyone's dealing the same shit as far as, like, COVID. Yeah, some cunts are living in a fucking mansion and other motherfuckers are living in a, a fucking studio apartment. I get that. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's a fucking global pandemic. Like, everybody's affected. So as long as the material's relevant... um to that person and they want to do it on stage then fuck it yeah i mean i'm i'm you know i wouldn't dissuade anyone from from doing it it just provided it's funny yeah. um i'm just worried there's going to be this like rash of like you know bland covid jokes and it's it's yeah, it's going to become it's it's going to become the new like what's the deal with that's you know, right yeah uh, dude. that that kind of thing but like I like I've written a COVID bit, and it's a true story, and like I was wetting myself when it happened, like yeah, yeah. in in the actual circumstance. It was so fucking funny, what my friend said to me, um, and I'm gonna do it on stage. 
But yeah, I'm just a little worried there's going to be like just COVID, 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 COVID. You know, it was similar to it like when the bushfires were going on in Australia. Yeah. You notice that a lot of stand ups were just talking about that and they yeah. based their whole set around it. And you were like, yeah, we get it. It sucks. You know, the first few comics that went up and then you could almost tell that like by the seventh comic, the six before them had already kind of hit their punch, their planned punchlines. Mm, mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it just it just started getting tired. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And, and the audience got bored. Yeah, exactly, man. Like, I get that. Like, that's why. So, I'm I'm not against the idea of doing COVID jokes. I've got a couple of things that are like in that same ballpark, but. Just like anything, dude, like, I I feel like yourself and I try and um, steer away from the normal when it comes to comedy. Like, even before COVID and all this other shit, like, like if we went back to, like, when you first started, um, or at least the first few months after you started, yourself... And I'd like to think myself as well would stand out from a normal comedy set anyway, as far as our yeah. material, subject matter, all that shit, right? Um, I think they're the same thing. But anyway, fuck it. I didn't pay attention in English. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, so, the reason I didn't pay attention in English because fucking people learn differently. Like when I went to school, motherfuckers were just like, "Oh, this is how it is. You you either learn or you don't. If you don't, that's too fucking bad. You're gonna be a dumb fuck for the rest of your life." Unless you choose some other way to, like, make money, basically you're fucked, right? Now they're like, oh, you know, he learns differently and here's a different way of fucking teaching him. Like, I probably could have benefited from that. But for now, I don't know the difference between fucking material and fucking subject matter. So everyone else has to deal with my fucking stupid stupidity. And now it's someone else's problem, so whatever. But basically what, <laughs> what I was saying before is we stood out before, I guess. Like, I'd like to think that I stood out. Maybe I'm just a fucking... Oh, get ready for a big word, a fucking narcissist. Is that even in the right context? I don't fucking know. Um, but <laughs> at the end of the day, I like to think that I tend to try to get different material from everybody else just because of the things I find um, noteworthy, uh, like not what everyone else might find noteworthy. So it's it's different. And I'd <clears> like to apply that same logic to post-lockdown where if everyone's doing COVID stuff, I, again, would like to choose something else that's different from everybody else because that's not because yeah. I want to be different, just because I think differently from everyone else. So, naturally, my material is going to be fucking different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I haven't been writing as much stuff as I probably should have been. Yeah. Um, isolation and, and depression are not great, uh, you know, Um combination yeah yeah not not great you you went for the but, um, hard word you're like you're like coexistence co something blah 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 and then i've just gone <laughs> fucking like combination cuz like it's my one chance <laughs> It's my one fucking chance in this whole episode that I can try and prove myself to the audience that you don't need, like, a good education. You can still fucking <laughs> think of good words. <laughs> It'd be I, like I, if, I think... if you're going for, like, a, like a, like a, a three-point basket in, like, a game of basketball and I just fucking, like, quickly get it in with a layup and just start cheering for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what I was actually thinking of is that Depression and isolation aren't good bedfellows. I don't know where I was going with this with a c word. Like, dude, I, I feel like I feel like if depression and isolation were actual physical humans, they would be great bedfellows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just hang around all day, you know, just sleep, nap, drink, you know, yeah. Have lame, terrible sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Both cry after. <laughs> oh man. Uh, oh man. Yeah. So. So anyway. what? Um. So so what? So what have you been doing with yourself? What have you been doing to keep occupied? Uh, I'm lucky enough because I normally uh, I'm like an office worker as well. I'm lucky enough to be um, in IT and deemed essential. So I'm uh, yeah. working in 
working in an IT job where basically like IT is still essential so that's good in my role in particular I need to go to the office so that side of things hasn't changed I actually found work during this whole thing so I was just working uh, in a bottle um and now I've picked up like an IT job and um, no, awesome. managed to like keep doing that. So there'd be more like job opportunities for me without all the lockdown, but at least I managed to get, get into it, into another job anyway. So, I mean, I, I can't really say that I'd be, I can't really say I'm better off at the moment than I would be without it because like who knows what opportunities would have come up if there, if everything wasn't put on hold I took a step forward which is good oh, dude, yeah that's that, that's fantastic um yeah I um my my contract will run out at the end of the financial year um and I'm just trying to look at it as you know a new opportunity to sort of look at what do I really want to do you know, where do I want to live? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've got, I've got no hard feelings about that. Um, I finally, and like, I'm so obsessed, like, with TV and and film. Um, but I finally got a Netflix um, account. Yep. Um, and I couldn't believe it. Like, I signed up for the premium account, and it's only twenty bucks a month. And they gave me five different accounts. So I gave my brother one, my sister one, my housemate one, and then there's one that's designated for kids only. Um, so I haven't given that to anyone. Um, I don't want to end up on a you know, watch list. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah but, just um, pull up in a van that says free Netflix on the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like an ice, ice cream wagon that's just giving out <laughs> Netflix accounts. Excuse me, man, but your son stopped kicking the back of my chair. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, anyway. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, I've, I've, been, I've been doing a lot of Netflix, uh, but no chilling. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unfor- unfortunately. <laughs> As a single man, um, yeah. <laughs> but um, something that came out. We'll, today, we'll plug your Tinder and stuff later, man. It's all good. We'll, we'll say plugs <laughs> for the end, <laughs> dude. I'm I, I'm not on Tinder. Oh, okay. Um, Exclusive, I, like one of those fucking escort sites. <laughs> you need like a private <laughs> link and shit. <laughs> no, no, no. I just I, it, the, the thing to like because friends have suggested like get on Tinder or whatever, and apparently you have to upload uh, like five photos or whatever. Right. And for me, like, I just I, the pro that process of going what five photos best represent me, you know, and like here's one with my dog. And here's one with me in a suit so that, you know, I make money or whatever. And it's just like, I'm, I'm not doing it. Like, I, it's just a, a level of sort of, I don't know if vanity is the right word, but I just, I, just even that process of setting up a Tinder account, I, I, I can't go through. Yeah. I mean, check back in, check back in with me in six months and see if I, see if I still have that. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're uh, if you're slow to the <laughs> if you're slow to the podcast and you're listening to this six months after it's um, appeared, yeah, check in. Either Ross has a Netflix account, or this is one of those fucking memorial episodes. <laughs> you know those <laughs> like fucking in loving memory of Ross. <laughs> <laughs> oh man died died of a broken wrist of the right hand yeah exactly uh, just like well let's be honest dude like if you're the kind of person that can't be fucked choosing five pitches you're actually the perfect candidate for tinder but the problem is to be on tinder you need to actually give an, enough of a fuck to upload five photos so it's like counterproductive if someone doesn't give a fuck that they don't want to upload photos then that's like the perfect candidate for Tinder, but that person will never be on Tinder because they can't be fucked creating the account. So it's just a fucking catch-22. Yeah, it's. I mean, like, in my life, it's similar to updating my resume. Mm. Like, I, I, I feel like, oh, do I really, like, just here, have the old one. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, just, look, I've done stuff. 
Yeah, you know, it's like, like you either want the fucking job or not. I went for I went for a, a job application one time, and they wanted me to fill out like how I align with their company values and shit. And I was just like, <laughs> that's always a great, great question. Like, Look, yeah, dude, I'm fucking. I'm I like, I'll do my job. You just tell me what that is. I'm not going to remember your fucking values. I don't care about fucking social Fridays where everyone brings in a cake and shit. I, I'm just fucking here to do my job. Um, I'll get fucking, like, I'll just, I'll get fucking wounded at the Christmas party just like everyone else. And that's fucking it. We'll call it a year. How's that? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not here to fucking look at you like, like, I'm not about to hang those fucking five... Um, um, values on the back of my, like, f- fucking monitor or whatever, you know? I'm not going to put that on the wall in my cubicle and fucking read them every day and just make sure that I know them in case someone asks me. Because let me tell you for a fact, if you know the five company values, you're not the sort of person that you want to fucking work there anyway. So it's kind of shitty thing to do. Because, like, <laughs> like if, <laughs> if you're so shit at your job that you need to learn the company values just in order to fucking trick people into thinking that you're good, then it's not worth fucking hiring that person. If, if the only yeah. thing that someone brings to the table is they know the five fucking values inside out, then they're hiding how shit they really are. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's like, it, 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 it's, you know, like the equal opportunity, you know, activist or, or whatever it is, you know, and, and that kind of thing. I, 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 I have a subscription with like a, or a notification subscription for um, ethical jobs. Yep. Um, to try and find a job that I could do for a, a non-profit, okay. right? But but I've only got like a base set of skills in you know in being a BA or a PM or whatever. Um, and so some jobs pop up, and it's like, yeah, I'd be perfect for that. But then one of the critical criteria will be things like, um, you know, a bachelor in social studies or something yeah and it just immediately rules me out and it's like this is like i i I volunteered for st vinnie's way back when um when i was at university Um, (laughs) yeah i just pictured you in the apron like one of the blue aprons just at the front of the store (laughs) well we we were just doing the um like we we were doing the night patrol um, thing where you just give out soup. And oh yeah, yeah. And I think you might have sandwich. mentioned that um, to me yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. And um, it, it 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 just wait it, soup and I, coffee. Yeah, I know, I know. It was just, and it, that's what you want to do. It, fucking remember every minute of being homeless. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah um, like i'll just get fucking wired up on caffeine that'll help me sleep in these tough times dude i i just don't understand how like the two things that they give homeless people soup and coffee it's just like they're both potentially by themselves could make you shit yourself like that's just not something that you're gonna give it, give out to me yeah like, like yeah man like um, there's yeah yeah. There's right. one there's, bathroom for twenty people, and we will give them all soup and coffee at the same time. Yeah, and that toilet is occupied for twenty minutes by a guy who's passed out in heroin. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like we we've got we got nineteen soups and coffee and one heroin. So get in fast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you can either fill your belly or just never eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh fuck, man. that's. Uh, oh man, I'm, that's... I'm, yeah, I just fucking, I don't know, man. Like, and to find soup as well. Like, technically, the guy cleaning windscreens has a bot- has like a bucket of soup there. <laughs> <laughs> like, so... Well, yeah, I mean, if if you're listening to if you're listening to Trump's advice, oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah and you, you, you want to. Drink some Drano to get rid of COVID. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, Fuck, it, it gives everyone that drinks that was planning on drinking bleach to get rid of COVID anyway an actual reason to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, what's funny about that is your assumption that those people exist. Yeah. Like, there were people out there looking, looking at the orange juice, looking at the bleach. Thinking, 
Uh, flip a coin. Uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. I did you see this? I seen this fucking thing online, right? There was this this person, this chick. She um, she had like this form of body dysmorphia, where she um identified this as a be, this, someone. This that, yes, she identified as someone that was blind. Like she just didn't feel right until she was b- legally blind. So she went to this fucking psychiatrist and he, well, this like went, went, basically went to a shrink and the, and the dude was like, oh yeah, um, I'm just going to fucking do a whole bunch of, um, psych evaluations on you, not get any other opinions. And he concluded that like, yeah, no, you're right. You should actually take away your own fucking vision so that you feel better about yourself. The fucking weirdest part about that is she, um, he fucking did it for her. He brings her into the fucking thing and put fucking Drano in her eyes until she couldn't Jesus see anymore. Christ. And then fucking, like, took her to emergency and then she, like, she's fucking can't see anymore. And there was, like, the interview with her. I, I'm not going to put the link in the description or shit. Like, if you fucking pe- if people... <laughs> If people want to fucking see this shit, or like pun not intended, like if you if you want to fucking look this up, <laughs> like if you want to look this up, you're gonna have to go online. Obviously, not the chick from the documentary. She'll need to tell her fucking dog how to do it. Go online <laughs> and fucking look it up because yeah, this shit's legit. So he he blinds her and they interviewed her after, and they were like, um, actually, do me a fucking favor. Whoever's listening, look it up and put the link in the comments, and then just fucking save everyone else the trouble. <laughs> Get ready for links that aren't it. <laughs> but yeah anyway they interviewed her after she's all like oh yeah i feel better now i feel like I, i'm actually myself and all this shit and i'm just like well she, all, all, all she can really do at that point is feel <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> look i can see clearly now it's <laughs> <laughs> so I really am like, you know, I, I I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and just like oh, all, oh, all yeah. this shit. It's just like that's not fucking light at the end of the tunnel. That's your optic nerve just giving way finally. <laughs> oh man, but yeah. Anyway, did, whatever. Did, 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 did <laughs> so the that's a long fucking. She could have just said, "I want a dog." Like that's a long way of going about it. <laughs> Yeah, just go to a rescue shelter and be like, that one looks good. Yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, look, here's a whole bunch of dogs and I don't need to put Drano in my eyes to get one. Did that doctor get, like, disbarred or Man, whatever it's called? To all, I, all I know is that first part. I, I'd actually like to know what the follow-up from that was. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look this up. That's, yeah. the, that's <laughs> fucking fascinating. Like, yeah, I mean, oh, God, it's... It's just got to get to a point where we stop indulging people's fantasies. Like, you can't be an octopus. I'm sorry. Like, I know that medical science is is amazing, but we're we're just not going to do it. Like, what what was this person thinking? Yeah, look, I I don't know, man. I I feel like in that situation, um, they should have definitely got, like... Basically, what that dude was saying was, look, I'm fucking out of ideas, so instead of um, passing it on to someone else that's got a different viewpoint than me and perhaps they can get through this, I'm just going to fucking go ahead and do it. Like, <laughs> I just don't... And he, was, he, he wasn't like a psychiatrist or anything. Um, no, look, from what I've seen, he was a... Um, he was actually a uh, like a like in the mental health industry, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, why would why would anyone in that industry fucking choose that option? Well, because she can't ID him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's gonna suck for her. Like a police lineup. Oh, uh, we don't. We can't actually <laughs> tell who it was. All right, we're gonna have to get number one to come through and pour Drano into her eyes. Does this feel like the guy? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, be, because of COVID, we can't let you touch his face to find out what he looks like. So, yeah. uh, One of those situations where I'm just like, man, you get to a point where it's it's a disadvantage to that person to follow what they want to do. 
both mentally and physically. So, um, yeah. So they need to actually look more into the health of that person um, down the track. Like, for example, if I wanted to be someone who was had stage four fucking cancer, I can't just go and get it and be like, oh, I feel fucking good now. <laughs> Like, it's just like, oh, well, you know, how, then, you know, then I won't feel like I earned it. Like, if I, <laughs> like, normally people with that level of cancer have fucking paid thousands, if not millions of dollars in habits to get to that point. Whereas I can just go out all fucking willy nilly and come back with some fucking debilitating disease <laughs> that I never even <laughs> fucking paid to get. Um, Look, I understand there is some like oh, levels of um of um physical illness that are um just genetically inclined to get and that sucks. Like that fucking sucks. But I'm I'm yeah, I'm talking yeah. more so like lifelong smokers, fucking abuse, substance, alcohol, whatever. Um So you you you're basically describing me right now yeah. <laughs> basically ross if we're in the cancer ward together and i fucking didn't earn it then you have the right to fucking beat the last bit of life out of me <laughs> no I, I i feel like if we were both in the cancer ward together i would give you my chemo because i'd be like i drank and smoked all my life and you were a good bloke i i think you deserve this i'll just uh i'll tap out yeah, yeah, dude, just, like, puts it on you, like, the dude just walks in, he's got, like, one fucking, like, person that he can take with him to the chemo room, and he just, like, oh, well, look, I can only take one of yours, and, uh, well, I'm, uh, you know, like, you guys just work it out amongst yourself. <laughs> and he, 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 le he leaves you with a coin to flip. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's, he's, like, not legally fucking, like, able to, like, pass judgment, but he's like kind of just hinting like well you did drink and smoke all your life but i'll leave you guys to it <laughs> yeah so one of you is going to go on to lead a prosperous life the other one is going to keep drinking and smoking and die in about five years anyway so no he was just like one of us is going to leave this room uh, to lead a long and prosperous life so i'm just going to walk out and leave you two fucks here <laughs> i've been watching a bit of black mirror yeah i could see that as like a game show in black mirror like cancer patients being like all right let's duke it out Who's 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 going forward to the yeah. next round? Well, it reminds me of an old movie or old like early two thousands maybe movie called Gamer. Have you seen that? No. So they get people that are on death row and implant like a chip in them that means that their bodies can be controlled remotely, and then they get these like really high paying um, like gamers to play like a shooter game but with actual people but they're controlling their bodies just like a console game but only it controls an actual person and they put them all in this fucking arena and just um literally just play like a normal shooting game but it's with actual people and then <coughs> it um this is all in the first half that you learn this so i'm not spoiling it for anyone out there but fuck off it came out like fucking 10 years ago like if you haven't seen it, <laughs> yeah um but yeah I, 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 I always find that funny when th people throw out, like, spoiler alerts for, yeah. like, the Shawshank Redemption. And it's yeah. like, if you haven't seen that film by now, fuck yourself. Like, yeah, like... yeah, exactly. It's just like, like, actually, in general, if you're worried about spoilers for a prison show, then fuck yourself. Basically, like, if, if you... If you watch any of the, like, Marvel movies and you're like, yeah, sure, there's fucking plot twists and spoils in there. But at the end of the day... Like, even if it's not in that movie, it's in, like, the following movie or some shit, the good guys are going to fucking win. Like, there's no, like... Yeah. The, the, like, if, you, if you're if you so fucking weak that you need to be like, oh, tell me about spoilers, then you're just like, well, dude, what the fuck are you watching the movie for? If someone can tell you the movie and you don't need to watch it anymore, ask people to tell you the fucking movie and save yourself three hours of your fucking life. Like, if if you don't watch a movie for the experience of watching the movie and you think that someone else can spoil it for you, then you're just fucking wasting your time. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I thought that about um, the first um, uh, 
uh, of the last two Avengers films. I can't remember what it was called. Um, I don't. It, I think Endgame. People just was losing very... their fucking shit in the background, like people listening to this, like Kai's driving his garbage truck, just yelling the fucking name of the, <laughs> of the shit at the windscreen. Oh, right, shout out to fucking Kai for like keeping up to date with all the fucking like Marvel shit, man. Like. <laughs> Man. How fa- oh, dude, I saw a photo he put on Facebook of him dressed as Deadpool, but with the gauntlet. Yeah, with yeah. All the ring- with yeah. all the rings. That was, that was great. Yeah, dude. Uh, like, it's fucking cool, man. I, um, actually, I, I clocked him on, um, on his, uh, Deadpool trainee shirt when we did the games night at his place, like, way before lockdown. Um, he was wearing a, um, uh, shirt that Deadpool wears in one of the um one in the latest Deadpool movie, Deadpool two yeah. I think it was um yeah and like I actually got the reference I was just like oh shit you got the fucking the trainee shirt from um from uh, Deadpool and yeah but anyway shout out to fucking guy he's been on the show before oh, I think he's the running actually you and him were second place for most visits on the show so um the next one. Yeah, the next one I'll have to get him back on to even it back up again. Three for three. I, I did an episode with him for his um, podcast, which is which isn't released yet. So yeah, that, yeah, I'm keen for yeah, that. Yeah, he, yeah, he's invited me onto that, um, and I'm 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 going to pop round to his house. So I'm pretty excited to to do that one. That'll be that'll be good fun. Give me the honour of uh, you know being a guest on his podcast. So very keen to do that. Um, I know he's got a, a bit of a formula and some questions and stuff like that, so I'm pretty curious to see how that all goes. I think yeah, it'll be man. a lot of fun. It's, it's way more organized than this one, dude. Like, we were talking earlier about, you know, how long you need to do comedy to start getting a return or, like, feel like you've passed um, the first stages. And um, yeah. I've seen that he shared a couple things from, like, 10 years ago of him when he first started. So, like... He's he's definitely done the fucking time, man. Like I'm I'm keen to see where the like after all this lockdown and everything, like where his fucking comedy career goes. Because I feel like he's done the time to start to like he planned Melbourne and shit, man. I'm fucking keen to see like what the next twelve months holds for him. Because I feel like 2020 is pretty much a fucking write off at this point. I reckon by the end of the year we'll probably open mics will be okay and that kind of stuff. I feel um, like. I feel like New Year's from 2020 through to 2021 will be, like, the same vibe as fucking, like, New Year's parties that I remember from, like, the early 2000s. Like, I I feel like I haven't been to a New Year's that's had that same fucking, like, feel about the excitement of the following fucking year ever since, like, the 2000s. I feel like ever since then, it's just always been just the same shit just for a different year yeah and you're just waiting for the clock to go that's a good point actually i didn't think about that but at, at the end of this year there's i reckon there's going to be massive celebration that this year is fucking over Dude, like for sure. it's it's you know it's just ludicrous um but yeah i, I yeah I, I, I like i'm absolutely devastated that the Melbourne Comedy Festival didn't go ahead. Yeah. And all all I was going to be doing was like, um, well, I was going to be doing a couple of things, but I was just getting to get to open for, for a couple of acts. Yeah. Um, I was going to do every open mic I could find, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, people like, like the guys I was going with, Kai and Bill, and, like, they put money into it. They, you know, they work so fucking hard. And, you know, that 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 video Kai put on Facebook, it was so heartbreaking. Like, you know, just watching him burn his promotional material, stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's brutal. I really hope he comes back just guns blazing. Like, yeah, dude, fuck no. this. I'm... I'm I'm coming back. I'm coming back hard, and you know, I mean, he's got the talent. He, he's got the experience. But I, I really hope he just, um, yeah, comes back on all cylinders. Yeah, man. Well, I, I hope that anyone has had shows cancelled because of COVID comes back with like 
all guns blazing. I know that, like, the Canberra Comedy Festival, although it wasn't the biggest festival out of, like, compared to Melbourne or Sydney or anything like that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> man, like, it's still, it's still, like, one of the bigger calendar events in the, in the Canberra Comedy calendar for the year. Yeah. And just yeah. completely holding that off is fucking massive. Like, to not have that event this year is fucking one of those things where it's like, okay, that's fucking notable. Like, uh, I look yeah. forward to the day that we can just fucking look back at the time that the Canberra Comedy Festival and the Melbourne Comedy Festival and basically every fucking comedy festival was cancelled and just say, yeah, it's pretty crazy that that happened and, yeah, I lived through it and, like, it'll just be a fucking distant memory. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, yeah, I'm I'm keen to keen to get like you mentioned before about getting back up on stage, man. I'm keen to get back up there and keen to do some stuff. I'm 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 excited to have like a um like a post lockdown gig and just give everyone a chance to get back up on stage. And yeah, it's fucking been a while for a lot of people, and a lot of the shit might not be worked out. But it's fucking stage time, and it's what everyone's keen to do. Yeah, exactly, and and. Like I, I was talking to a housemate uh, today, <clears throat> and saying that I was um, I was going to be on your on your podcast, um, and something like this, like being on your podcast that might exist on YouTube for six to twelve hours. Yeah, get it while um, it lasts. <laughs> yeah, uh, that makes me way more nervous than getting up on stage because if you eat shit on stage. You learn from it, you know, 30 people saw it. You never invite your friends to see you stand up. So yeah. you just you, you just kind of go, oh, well, fuck it. And you shake it off, you learn from it, and you go, that bit didn't work or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, but once something's out there and it's permanent, it's like it's a whole different level. It's, it, it's why I've never, not done anything with social media or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm really hoping. Like the other thing that we've had to kind of battle with, I say that like I'm some sort of veteran um, of the Canberra comedy scene, but ever since I've joined, one of the dramas we've had, in my experience, is that <clears throat> most of the time, you know, fifty percent of the crowd are other comedians. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And yeah. I'm really, really, really hoping that, you know, when all this shit settles down, I'm hoping that people are so keen to go out and do things and go to restaurants and go to, you know, events and stuff. I'm really hoping we get, like, a massive uptick in, like, crowds, mm. um, you know, and – that that would be fantastic. Like that would be like an awesome side benefit of all the bullshit. Yeah, like I I feel like if any time was like now would be one of the best times for people to actually appreciate fucking live performances because with yeah. going without them for X amount of time um, means that it kind of increases the demands because it wasn't in supply for so long and then when you when you compare it to like not only that but dude people will be just happy to get out of the fucking house for once you know like once things are at a point where people can actually go out it'll 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 remind me of like some of the early days of going to the pub and just being like oh people are just out because they want to be out not because of any other gain aside from the fact that they just don't want to be in the house like i feel like we're in yeah. a position now where a lot of people can get entertainment at home freely so some people don't see any need to leave the house because what they would usually seek outside their home um is now available in their house and then and not to the full yeah. extent but like you know before Netflix, before even before, like if you go right back to like pre VHS, people used to have to legitimately fucking go to the cinema to watch movies. You know, like people used. Yeah, to, dude, uh, yeah. I'm I'm old, I'm old enough to remember going to the drive-in. 
Yeah, yeah right. But, you know, and that was a fun event. Yeah, you, know, see. you literally sat in your own car and watched a movie. Exactly. Like, um, dude, fucking, like, drive-ins, right? That is something that could kick back off because it's something that's unique now. It's unique and it's your own space. You're not with other people. You're not around other people. You know, the people that you come with are the people you sit with. It's It may, it may not ever happen, but the... The potential's there. You, I could picture... Because yeah. I honestly... <clears throat> if, I, if I'm telling you that I that people will go back to normal, yeah, like, shit might go back to normal one day, but I feel like at least this generation of people will still have some element of this current situation in their mind for the rest of their fucking life. The social distancing will probably always exist after this. There'll be some level of fucking social distancing that will always exist. Even yeah, if it's I'm... not physically, people will still remember. It'll be subconsciously. I think people will be more fucking respectful of each other's personal space. Yeah, I, I mean, I totally support the respectful of personal space. I've got a particular friend that has no concept of that. Um, and it's the most annoying thing in the world. Um, Are you still talking yeah, about I, I, the time I... that I used the urinal right next to you? <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> casu- <laughs> casually trying to tell me that that was fucked. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I you're mean, right. Among... I never did that. I was trying to be cool. <laughs> so I was trying to tell people yeah. that I did it. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. You didn't want to compare. Um, but... <laughs> no, like some some of my friends, um, they'll they'll know who I'm talking about. But this guy just had no concept. Of personal space whatsoever like it's like you'd be having a conversation and he'd be inches from you and you'd be like dude it doesn't have to be this way like yeah you can stand like two feet away from me and we can have the same conversation yeah but um but no to get to your point i i I don't know about the lingering effect effects of this because i think the younger generation that I'm maybe not a part of anymore. I think they're just going to go, fuck it, everything's back open, let's go back to normal. Yeah. Um, it, you know, I, I, re- I really do, I, I, I can't see this, like, in, in 10 years' time, you know, there being a, a, you know, a concert and people being nervous. Yeah, I, true. I, true. I, I, like, unless there's a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth wave, I, I don't, in 10 years, I, I can't imagine 20-year-olds being like, I'm not going to, you know, hug, hug my friend. I'm just yeah. going to fist bump, fist bump. Like I, you know, Yeah, I, just... I guess so. I, I feel like if I could summarise it a bit better, I'd say that there was always people that didn't want you to be close to them. I'm one of those fucking people for the most part, uh, mostly for strangers. This gives everyone with that feeling more respect in society. So mm. if, if I, I can tell you for a fact, like before, um, before COVID, if I was standing somewhere and someone would push past me and I could feel them brush against me as I was standing in an aisle or something. And I said to that person, Oi, can you like walk around next time or just <laughs> at least say excuse me or some shit like that? Um, th- I wouldn't be respected by that person for ha- for pointing out their flaw. Don't you fucking love how when you point out someone else's flaw, their immediate response is to tell you you're the one that's wrong? Um, yeah, yeah. But I feel like if that happens now, I wouldn't just have the support of the people around me, but that person would probably most likely fold to peer pressure and go, oh, whoops, because they realise that that is a thing at the moment. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess so. But I mean, like... But yeah, you're right. In know. like 10 years' time, no one... <clears throat> like, it, everyone... I actually spoke about this on the podcast with Jack Taylor. When when we were talking about it, he had a he had a point similar to yours. It takes time to build habits and the and the current situation won't last for long enough for everyone to build fucking habits and they'll just return back to it's they're also people are lazy. People just do what's fucking easiest. Also, people 
of want to avoid conflict, so they won't say to somebody, oh, could you please move so that I can get around you? They'll just fucking brush against you and deal with the consequences if you call them out on it. Oh, yeah. Dude, have you ever been to Tokyo? No. It's fucking insane. Yeah, here, here I am with my four square meters around me, totally fucking whinging because someone touches me. I've never been in a position, aside from like festivals and shit, um, where that's the normal. So I can't really talk on behalf of that. <coughs> yeah, I, <coughs> I, don't, I, I don't think it'll last too long. But yeah, I think Australia's handled it pretty well. Um, there will be a second wave, um, but... I think, you know, I'm the last guy in the world that's going to credit Scott Morrison for fucking anything. Um, but I think the states have been doing pretty well. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think we'll be okay. All right, yeah, so that one concludes the end of the first half of the Rosh Yeoman episode. Hope you guys fucking in, enjoyed it. Um, make sure you listen to the second episode for all of our um, Would You Rather questions and um, one special question. Next episode's the first time that one will be um, be aired, so make sure you fucking tune in. Until next time, thanks for fucking listening and uh, listen to the next episode to hear more. Thanks for being on the show, Ross. Yeah, Matt, always love it. Um, yeah, always honoured to... Uh to be uh, apparently the reigning champ of the uh, Mucky Working Podcast so far. Yeah, fuck yeah. It's good to have you on, man. <laughs> All right, brother. Love you.